right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Nick Ebrill, who is in Joburg, in Johannesburg, in South Africa. How are you doing, Dr. Nick? Very good, John. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. And... Um, and Dr. Nick is the, is the co-founder and chief innovation officer at the Deal Maker System. And what we're going to talk today about is the power of reciprocation and how you can build strategic relationships on LinkedIn that turn uh, clients into clients for life. So um, uh, let, let's be honest, uh, Dr. Nick, oh, over the last while, particularly during the pandemic and stuff, and I mean, LinkedIn has gone a little crazy, right? You know, because everybody's on there and they're like, prospecting like crazy and they're spamming like crazy and all of that how do um how do you rise above that and still use it as a strategic tool without getting lumped in with all of these other people well absolutely john engagement has doubled more than doubled since the pandemic and decision makers are bombarded your competitors are on linkedin so are your clients and you have to earn the right to connect before you even start to pitch and that's really what um, the new LinkedIn is all about. That's what the new LinkedIn algorithm is all about. You have to build rapport before you start selling. And that's the beauty of LinkedIn. LinkedIn has got a number of touch points that allow you to build rapport before you even ask for the connection. And that's what reciprocation is all about. Uh, so let's, let's um, talk that through because basically, I mean, what happens a lot nowadays is, uh, as you know, is people people write you a nice little note requesting your connection. Uh, it all sounds very nice. And you say, OK, sounds reasonable. You click on it, you get an immediate automated email with a sales pitch. <laughs> so um, what should people be doing? Absolutely. So what you have to do, what you have to do, you first have to, and you have got, you've got to be authentic about it. You've got to mm -hmm. be genuine about it. You really have to do what you mean. And that means, first of all, I need to, if I want to connect with you on LinkedIn, I first need to learn about you. I need to view your profile. I need to follow you. I need to engage with your content. I need to make sure that I resonate with what you're about. I need to like your comment. I need to comment on your content. And that's really how you stand out. That's how you get noticed. And if I comment meaningfully on your content, now I've earned the right to connect with you. Yeah. But I need to tell you why. Why do I want to connect for you with you? And what's in it for you? What's the reason why you should accept my connection request? Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. One of the things, uh, Dr. Nick, is, uh, as you rightly uh, pointed out um, a moment ago, is, you know, earning the right and engaging with your content. And what that doesn't mean is, I mean, you can see sometimes inauthentic engagement where, you know, people would just go on and like it and then put great post, great, great post. And, you know, they didn't read it. Exactly. No, you need to, again, I mean, it comes down to authenticity. It really comes down to leadership. And I mean, there's so much talk about authenticity, but you have to take it serious. You have to say what you mean. And if I read your content, if I read your post on LinkedIn, and it resonates, and I think the keyword is resonate, mm -hmm. and I make a meaningful contribution, I advance a conversation, then and only then have I earned the right to, uh, to connect. Yeah. Uh, one of the one of the problems that we we bump up against, uh, Nick, is that we live in a kind of a shortcut culture. It's like people don't want to put that kind of work in. You know, they want to like use the automations. They want to use the the LinkedIn. You know, the third party tools that can just go in and find people and do all of that stuff. And the reality is, as you're saying, just like in in real life, uh, building authentic connections and being real and and uh, and engaging in a meaningful way that takes a little bit of effort absolutely it's all about relationship building and you can only do that one-on-one -on -one. so when it comes to automation it's the surest way to get into linkedin jail and the problem is if you get into linkedin jail now with a new linkedin algorithm there's no more a jail free card you you can't get out at least not easily 
So mm-hmm. you've got to build relationships one-on-one. You've got to put in the effort. You've got to be genuine. And you have to lead with value all the time. And that means not what you think is value, but what your clients really rate as value. So um, so just to explain for the audience, for those who may not be uh, fully aware of the changes in the LinkedIn uh, algorithms and what they're trying to do. Okay, well, there's uh, a couple of biggies. For example, sharing is no longer caring. If you share content on LinkedIn, LinkedIn views it as duplicating and it will penalize your share by reducing visibility reach by up to up to 90%. Wow. So there's a couple of content types that are really doing well right now on LinkedIn. Obviously polls, you must have seen the engagement polls are getting. Um, yeah. Videos, videos between 30 to 60 seconds with subtitles, subtitles are king and square. You want to make them square. Um, and then documents. If you have a slight carousal that is graphically appealing, these type of content forms really are doing well right now on LinkedIn. And then what, and then as you were just saying about LinkedIn jail, because I think a lot of people have been caught a little bit flat-footed on that one as well. <clears throat> yeah, well, if you don't even think about automation, automation, LinkedIn will pick up automation 99% of the time. And once they pick it up, the game is over for you. So do you really want to lose? And there was a recruiter recently with 17,000 connections. She had a premium account. She got kicked out of LinkedIn because of automation. Uh, Definitely, you want to keep your CRM to 10 times 10 a day. When I mean not more than 10 connection requests a day, not more than 10 messages a day. That's how you need to think about the new LinkedIn. And, uh, and, and uh, no, I mean, I think that's, uh, th- that's great. So there's going to be, I mean, it seems to me that there's going to be a lot of people are going to be caught out on this. So there's going to be some kind of, uh, um, I wouldn't say purge is probably too strong a word, but certainly bad behavior is going to start getting uh, penalized in a big way. Absolutely. I mean, after all, LinkedIn is a professional network and Microsoft, who spent a lot of money in uh, uh, in in buying LinkedIn and taking LinkedIn to the next level are very serious about keeping it a professional network. So you can't do what you typically do on other social media. You can't disparage. You can't swear. If you do swear on LinkedIn, it's a sure sh- way to land in, mm-hmm. in LinkedIn jail. You've got to be professional at all times. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, I, to be honest, I don't, uh, I, I, I don't like people swearing uh, generally in professional settings and stuff. People sometimes like to do it, think it's for shock value or whatever, but I think it's a, I think it's a little juvenile myself. I think, you know, we're, we're adults, you know, we have a good, you know, we have, uh, we have enough vocabulary at our disposal without having to get into profanities. Absolutely. And and what it really comes down to, you have to lead with value. And what Professor Robert Cialdini, um, the author of Influence, the, uh, the one work, the authoritative work about influence really uh, has stated again and again, reciprocation is the most fundamental social contract amongst us social human beings. What it means, you have to be the first one to provide value. You have to do it in an unexpected way and you have to do it in a very personalized way. Yeah, and I think that's a that's a, those are key points, and, and I'd like to dive a little bit more into this concept of reciprocation because I'm not sure everybody understands it. And um, what you're talking about here is that uh, the the onus is on you to take the first couple of steps and to do them do them authentically and genuinely, and not expect an immediate result. Right? If it happens, great, but you shouldn't accept, expect an immediate result. Absolutely. So I've done it and I see you are doing it as well. And I call it the go-giver concept after the great book by Bob Burke, where basically you have to give first. So I have interviewed over the last uh, five uh, five years, I've interviewed 200 global leaders about the future of leadership, not in order to get more business, but in order to profile people that I consider to be great, that I consider to be authorities in their field that I consider to be of value to my audience. And I think you're doing exactly the same. 
and you're doing this mm -hmm. so without a hidden yeah. agenda. No. Yeah, no, it's out there with no hidden agenda. Absolutely. I mean, this is what we uh, what we do uh, is we go find interesting people that we think have got valuable things to say and that can help our audience. And, and we, we're just the conduit for connecting people with great content, with great people. And, and it's a reward in itself, because quite frankly, I get to learn from folks like yourself. It's very, it's very educational for me. Uh, and second off, uh, you know, the audience gets to, to learn as well. And I think that's it. I think if we're all in a collective mode of wanting to learn together, I think then the world becomes a better place. And absolutely, and we had a time in, in, the, in the history of this planet where we have to elevate each other. It really is about conscious leadership. It really is about what President Nelson Mandela called, uh, what he said is that don't focus on making yourself great, focus on making others great. And the rewards are gonna come back to you. Now, yeah. unfortunately, very few people in marketing get this, this, this is really how the new economy works. You have to elevate others, you have to give first, and you have to do it in a spirit of, um, of conscious leadership. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think that's, that's, you're 100% you're correct. And, uh, and I do think that people are struggling with that. And I think marketing, as you say, is, is struggling with that. You know, many marketing departments are struggling with that, uh, with that whole concept of you know, reorienting how you market and how you engage and equipping, I think, equipping their salespeople to be able to engage in meaningful ways and giving them meaningful content and valuable content and guidance and how to to engage, as I said, engage in a meaningful way with, with whomever their, their target audience is. Absolutely. So you need to think about it this way, that yes, you want to be a thought leader, but more than that, I think on LinkedIn, on the new LinkedIn, you want to be a cheerleader. You have to cheer others and to have to really elevate others to a point where you build them up. And if you do that, mm -hmm then definitely they will help you to achieve what you want to achieve. Yeah. And interestingly, and I, that's a concept. Yeah, John? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Interestingly, that's a concept that Mandela called Ubuntu, helping others to achieve what they want to achieve. It might sound a bit ph philosophical, but it's very practical if you apply it. Yeah, I, I, and I, and again, I think that uh, it, it's a great concept because unfortunately, I think everybody got hung up on this idea about the fact that I have to be producing content all the time and I have to be posting stuff. And as you said, sharing, like sharing stuff all the time, but that's no longer a particularly good thing to do. Uh, but actually reading and engaging, as you said, being a cheerleader, that's a bit of a change for a change of uh, emphasis for, for a lot of people. And, and again, I think it's counterintuitive to some because they think, oh, well, I'm shoving myself, I'm putting myself in the background as opposed to putting myself out there in the foreground. So you have to switch your thinking. Absolutely. So <laughs> as we know, as you know, uh, most everybody, if you ask um, teenagers, if you ask the upcoming uh, youth, what does it say you want to become? They're, they're all, most of them want to become an influencer. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with influencing is that you're trying to influence people your way. And I advocate that you rather become an upfluencer, that you rather upfluence others, you put others ahead of yourself. And I really believe, and I've seen it so many times, this is a way to co-creating a better future for all of us. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like I said, unfortunately, uh, this runs a little counter culture today, because as you said, everybody wants to be an influencer, everybody wants to, uh, people are kind of measuring their own self worth, whether it's personal or professional by the amount of contacts they have, the amount of likes, the amount of what all of this kind of stuff. And basically, what you're talking about here is the concept of going back to, to service and servant leadership. Absolutely. And that's really what the world needs. I mean, we are obviously at a point in the history of this planet where we are now at a tipping point. Um, and uh, we need servant leadership in all spheres and not just marketing and selling, but in all spheres of society. Um, I think that's really, really important. 
Yeah. So when, when you work with your clients, I mean, how do you help people reorient their thinking? Because like, like we said, is um, well, everything you say makes total sense. And obviously understanding, you know, how LinkedIn works and all of that. But but just getting getting being able to f- switch back from, so we say, self-promotion to, as you said, to promoting other people or uplifting other people. Well, there's really just one word or two words, uh, John, and that's inbound. Switch your mindset and everything from outbound to inbound. And we know that right now only 3% of messages, in-mail messages to decision makers on LinkedIn get responded to, 3%. Inbound means obviously that you want to attract the right type of clients through to you by building your brand, your profile on LinkedIn, by doing market research, by inviting people to your LinkedIn events. The new LinkedIn event page is better than free advertising. And by doing interviews, inbound, it's all about inbound. It's all about pre-selling. So you got to keep that in mind. You got to pre-sell yourself, your brand and your value. Yeah. And, and I think the other thing, Dr. Nick, is uh, that people shouldn't overlook, especially if you're in sales. And that's, uh, you know, business acumen and understanding the business of, of your target client. Because, I mean, once upon a time, you, people could get away a little bit with having a very superficial understanding even of the of the people or the businesses that we're selling into. I don't think you can do that anymore. And I think if you're going to have meaningful connections and you're going to engage meaningfully with people on LinkedIn, you really need to understand the business of your target client. Well, you really, in my view, selling is all about researching. You have to go out. You have to, first of all, validate that what you're selling, that there's actually a, a demand for it. Because so much, if not everything, has changed in the last 18 months due to the pandemic. You need to validate, you need to reach out to your marketplace, you need to conduct market research interviews. And only then are you in a position to actually start marketing. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I, com- I completely agree with you. And I think that's the piece that's gotten lost a little bit because we live in this world where, and I say this all the time, we live in this world where people always say, oh, I'm busier than I've ever been. And and I always say, well, are you, are you, are you just more distracted than you've ever been? And I think that's it. We're so distracted that we, um, that actually taking time out to do that research, to really learn about your the business you're selling into, your customers, their needs, all of that. It's, uh, again, it's it's that discipline that you need to actually start to do it as opposed to just be reactive all the time because we're just so used to being kind of busy, even though, even though, as I said, even though a lot of it is probably uh, just distractions. Absolutely. In fact, <laughs> Bill Gates said it two years ago, busy is a new stupid. It's as simple as that. <laughs> right. And I saw um, it today, today, it's not that life is too short. It is that we spend too much time doing the wrong things. Yeah, the, and I think uh, I think most people would agree with that. Uh, so, what are some of the what are some of the other things that you should be thinking about um, on LinkedIn? So, I mean, there's the doing your research, there's engaging properly, like really like personalizing, understanding uh, what the other person is about. You know, they're, if they're posting content, you know, actually reading the content and meaningfully commenting and engaging. What are some other things that people could be doing? Well, the one big thing is, re- well, the two big things, you should be doing polls. And again, polls are great for doing market research. If you do a poll correctly, if you ask the right question and you give the right context around why you're asking this question, you will see engagement second to none. Secondly, LinkedIn events. The new LinkedIn event page is unbelievable in terms of you being able to register people on your LinkedIn event page, promoting your event to everybody in your network and following up. It is really, I can only uh, uh, re-emphasize, it is better than free advertising. If you use LinkedIn, the new LinkedIn event page properly. And the other thing that you said earlier about the, you know getting into LinkedIn jail, I mean, there's obviously automation over connecting and share. Is there anything else that can get you into bother? 
Well, um, again, keep it professional. Don't think about automation. Um, keep your CRM to 10 by 10. And I, I think it's just important to understand the terms and conditions of LinkedIn. Again, because there's so much spam, um, LinkedIn and Microsoft have really thrown down the gauntlet to making sure that you stick within the boundaries. Um, and the problem is that when you get, if you get into LinkedIn jail, it's almost impossible to go. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, I know some people who've, um, it, who that has happened to. And get um, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to get out. Okay, um, well, it looks well, like Dr. Nick, Dr. Nick, we're, we're, we're bumping up against the end of our time here. All of Dr. Nick's information is going to be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your company. Well, basically what we've done now over the last 10, by now 11 years, we've been working with companies, especially in tech, the likes of IBM, SAP, financial services, banks, insurance companies, and professional services to really help you build a brand on LinkedIn and attract. And the keyword is to attract new clients on LinkedIn. We have a webinar coming up on LinkedIn on the 1st of October. Um, and you'll find it on my profile. And I'm sure we can share the link here about yeah. the title is how to win clients on the new LinkedIn and really unpacking the new LinkedIn algorithm and how to position yourself, how to position your brand on LinkedIn to attract new clients. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's fantastic. And I would encourage people to to check out the event. And um, yeah, we'll put the link uh, below the video as well. I think it's critical for people to understand where this is going. It's it's kind of been long overdue, to be perfectly honest. Uh, and it's important for people to know where LinkedIn is going. And if you're going to use it, uh, you know, you get somebody like Dr. Nick to help you use it properly and uh, and see the success grow from there. Uh, again, my name is John Golden. Thanks, Dr. Nick, for all the way from South Africa today. And I uh, look you. forward to seeing you all on another interview really soon. Thank you. Great. Thanks, John. Yeah.